Hey guys, we're here with another episode of Behind the Music with Danny DeMosi himself talking about the song I See You Forgot Me, the Danny DeMosi remix. Well, I knew I wanted to capture more of a, like an emotional journey because most of the time in relationships, relationships aren't really like, I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of highs and lows. I'm sure, I'm sure you can relate, but the and that was kind of the idea that I tried to capture in the song. I wanted I wanted the transitions to feel rid, uh, rugged and jagged and uncomfortable, but also still have kind of that glory about them that comes with like the highs of a relationship and the lows of a relationship. Um, and I tried to do something similar with mine, but I think uh, I think I think I captured the energy in this one a little bit better. Obviously, the themes are a lot darker um, in this one uh, based on the story. If you don't know the story behind the song. Feel free to check out the uh, the other episode. Yeah, we did another episode of uh, Behind the Music for the original I See You Forgot Me mix, what we call ISFM as an acronym. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the story was more explained in that one if you want to hear more of the backstory with that. It's a totally different style. Like, what, how, did you, how did you take that dark element and make it what it is now? So I pulled a lot of inspiration from a lot of electronica artists. And that was kind of, when I first heard the original demo, that was kind of what I what I was hearing in my head was, you know, something big, electronica. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite as dancey as a lot of uh, modern artists are, but I wanted to have at least a degree of that danciness to keep the song, you know, moving and driving and whatever. But also capture a lot of that emotional, uh, the emotional element which comes from the power from electronica. It was really more about finding the balance between super emotional and still danceable, listenable. And it's still not the most danceable song ever, but uh, but it is kind of a, an, an interesting balance for sure. You did a fantastic job in balancing those two elements together because they're pretty extreme. To dance and then to cry is to, right. to combine those together. I think you did a fantastic job in making that happen. Definitely. And it has these ebbs and flows like you were, you were talking about in the song itself, not only with the dynamics of from the intro to the middle section, these dips as it goes, but in the intricacies of the instrumentation itself. Like, how many tracks are in this this <laughs> project? I think the final project was 100, 140, 150. 150 tracks. Yeah. It was it was definitely a little bit overboard. Most <laughs> of my projects are I try to keep them below 100, but this was one of the few exceptions that uh, I don't know. Maybe I just lost control. I don't know. <laughs> you got passionate about it. That's for sure. It's one of those songs that it packs a lot of content. Mm. Well, I guess a lot of emotional content into one place, and so it can be kind of difficult to work on because you'll make a tweak and you know, and you'll, and you'll write something, and, and then you're like, well, I don't know if this really, you know, communicates what the, the entire theme was about, and so it was a lot of that. So it wasn't necessarily like the entire layout of the song was done. I mean, within a week or two, it wasn't really anything special, and then after that, it was just the constant going back and thinking, is this really what I want to communicate? Mm. And, you know, so it was kind of just I'd bouncing back and forth until I finally found the balance where, yeah. where, I, where I really thought it communicated what I wanted it to. Mm. It, it, it's got so many layers. Those tracks, by the way, if you don't know what that is, is just the uh, instrumentation as far as how many instruments, how many layers of sound are in this song. And there's 150 of them. Uh, it almost blew, I think it blew up your computer once, right? I think we had to get you a new computer or something. <laughs> yeah, I was working on this little, <laughs> this little, this little laptop that I had. It was, you know, it was nice. I could, I could pick it up and take it places, but <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it, a big it very project. quickly outran its, its capabilities. This is long before we even met this song was done. Right. And what you did is you took the original audio and you said, well, we need to have you do uh, a new vocal take because they had a new microphone at that point, the higher quality was needed to encompass 150 <laughs> tracks like, plus Danny Power on top of that. And you know, Combine that with, the, I think there was legit like a like a phone alarm in the background <laughs> of one of the vocal tapes. Oh, that was in mine. Yeah, that's right. In mine, there is, a, there, is, there is a phone alarm in there and it's in the audio for the mine song. Who are your influences? I mean, you've done several songs with, you know, with, with, within our audience here. People know who you are. I, I want to know, they want to know more about you. Like, who inspires you? 
Ooh, it, it, honestly, it really depends. And the reality is, it, a lot of artists will quote their their influences and like, oh, you know, Skrillex and yeah. <laughs> and uh, Knife Party, whatever. Yeah. And then you know, but then they just make crappy dubstep, and you're like, there's nothing, there's nothing that you're actually taking from from those artists. So I consider an influence to be somebody who I'm actively stealing things from. Mm -hmm. So whether that's a sound or whether that's, you know, certain melodic content or something along those lines. For this particular song, the major influence was a record by Maddion that kind of had that same similar like powerhouse vibe. Mm -hmm. And so I would quote him as a direct influence on this particular track, but honestly, it really just depends on the track. Mm -hmm. I mean, I try and capture whatever the original artists put into the song and then I connect that with some other song that I already know, and then I actively steal from that person. So it really just depends on the song. Yes, they're all different. I know you. Yes. I noticed when we work together, you use a different artist, a different genre, almost every single time. That's right. So there's never just one. But for this one was was Maddion. Right. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Right. He makes really good music. Yes, that's right. Um, and by the way, all artists steal. That is a phrase that you actually taught me. Nothing is truly original. So taking an element, stealing, quote unquote, is just taking that element, that energy from the inspiration and implementing that in. So I think that's a really cool idea. All artists mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, for those who don't know, I, I come from a background in jazz music. Mm -hmm. So I played professionally for many years before I transitioned into audio engineering. And as such, I've pulled a lot of familiar concepts. So the concept of stealing and quoting and I mean, those are a bunch of sampling and occasion. Yeah, sampling yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, that's all. Bread part and of butter it. for jazz, so yeah. I just took little pieces of that, and a lot of other electronic electronic artists do the exact same thing. So. Yeah. And what I love about Danny's style is that he does come from that jazz background, which makes him very intelligent. Uh, one of the things I love about this particular track is that, like, right at the beginning, like it drifts off, it glides down, and like, just think about that that meaning, how that can be interpreted with what the song is about. Like, little things like that are all over in this song. Listen really carefully. There are there are there are sounds that you've played in this song that people who are not looking for it will won't hear it. <laughs> there are a lot of hidden treasures. Can you tell us about any hidden treasures in this song? Well, um, just know that they're all intentional. I'll let you discover them for yourself. But everything was was an intentional part of the message of the song. So I mean, a lot of them you will not hear unless you know you're super high at two a.m. <laughs> you know, but the they're there and yeah. uh, I hope you can find meaning in them in them just like I was trying to communicate yeah we hope that you find connection and meaning with this song is as we both did individually and collaboratively and all the work that Danny put into this for a year back and forth for a year like and 150 layers of this and the emotion with his his personal connection to music and sound and what he's conveying as an artist combined with my efforts in, in making what I did that together we hope really creates something that you can relate to I love you, man. You're, 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 he's, a, he's a great guy. Check out his music. Check out his art. He's phenomenal. Sky's the limit with Danny DeMosi. So thank you again for joining us here with Behind the Music featuring Danny DeMosi and discussing the new song, I See You Forgot Me, the Danny DeMosi remix coming this Valentine's Day. Hey, Danny, I'm going to tell you a joke. What do you call ninja dinosaurs? Ninja dinosaurs? What? You never saw us. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so bad. He said Danny DeMosi like three Dad times. Like, it's so fun to say Danny DeMosi. <laughs>